All right. I totally just lost this video. It, it went into the, the, the nether. I have no clue. Um, so I'm going to show you what I wrote, and we'll talk through it. Uh, these are absolute value equations that are real-world equations, right? Word problems to help us apply this to situations that could actually occur. Um, they gave us a little intro to this, right? Light travels in a straight line and can be modeled by a linear function. Uh, when it's reflected off a mirror, it travels in a straight line, and these angles, like that angle is the same as that angle. Um, we could say these angles down here are the same as well. But these angles, the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection, are always going to be the same, which gives you the same slope. Opposite, one's going down, one's going up, but allows you to draw an equation and model it with an absolute value equation, which is what we're going to do right now. All right. So here this is, and I'm just going to talk you through what I had written. You can pause as much as you want. At the Science Museum, a beam of light originates 10 feet off the floor, which we have here, the point zero ten. All right, is reflected off a mirror 15 feet on the ground away from the wall. So that's 15, 0, x value 15, y is 0. And it wants to how high off the floor does it hit the opposite wall that's 8.5 feet from the mirror. So we're going to go for it. I already got the answer here, but let's see how we got the answer. Right? So I started with my vertex, which gave me h, my x value 15, k. Right? My y value is 0. That's the vertex. Kind of nice to have it on the floor. I let b equal 1, I solve for a, which is this equation, if you remember what we've been doing, right? f of x equals a times x minus 15. Then you just need a point. Well, we actually have a point right here. This point is 0, 10. So 10 being my output, 0 being my input, right? I have a times the absolute value of 0 minus 15. Absolute value is going to make that negative 15 into a positive 15. Once I divide, 10 divided by 15 gives me an A of 2 thirds. Kind of nice, right? So I know my A value is 2 thirds, which allows me to write this equation, a very simple equation. All right? And then it says, hey, how high was this? So we get to figure out an X value to put in. Well, what would this X value be? This X value would be a combination of those two differences, assuming we let this be 0, 0. Okay? So if that's 15 and that's 8.5, right? Adding them together would give me an x value here of 23.5. So plugging that in, right? I plug in my input of 23.5 into the equation that we came up with. I get 23.5 minus 15. Well, guess what? That's just going to be 8.5 because that's really asking how far away from the vertex am I going to be. And then if I multiply 2 thirds by 8.5, I get my output of 5.67. Um, which is going to be this point right here. It is going to be, right, 23.5 and 5.67, and that tells us exactly how high off the ground it is. And that would be your answer. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> you didn't get to watch the other one either because it somehow got lost when I tried to save it. But I have solved the last problem too. All right, so let's talk about how we set it up. Two students are passing the ball back and forth. I instantly drew two students, right? Not the best drawings, all right? They allow it to bounce once in between, and then I kind of read the rest to it to see where I, maybe I should draw this, all right? This guy drew it, bounced it from a height of 1.4 meters, so it started at 1.4 meters. It bounced three meters away, which gives me this point right here, right? And it wants to know where the student would stand if he wanted to catch it at 1.2, so obviously, Closer to 1.4, right? Either here or here. Two possible answers. Of course, it'd be really hard for the ball to bounce back to him, so he's probably going to be on this side of it. That said, the ball does reach this height twice, right? Right about here and right about here. So, the equation, once again, is pretty easy, all right? This gives us an x value. That gives us the k value, so I don't need to write k. And I get this. If I solve for A, I get the g of x equals A times x minus 3. All right? Given only an h value and nothing else, we'll assume B is 0. We'll even write B is 0. I'm sorry, B is 1. And we plug in a known point. Well, in this situation, um, we have this point over here. We have 0 and 1.4 to solve this equation. So 1.4 is my output, 0 is my input. Right? 0 minus 3, negative 3, but that absolute value makes it a positive 3. 
Once I get here dividing both sides by 3, I get an A value. And I left it like this because it was a pretty ugly decimal. All right. So the equation was g of x equals 1.4 over 3 times x minus 3. Once again, this is my A value. We know B equals 1. This was my H value. And K was 0. Now, they want to know when it reaches a height of 1.2. And the key term here is height, indicating that we're looking for a Y value. So I'm going to plug in 1.2. But be aware that you're going to get two answers, right? So you plug in 1.2, and you had this equation here, 1.4 over 3 times x minus 3. Now you multiply by the reciprocal of this, which is 3 over 1.4, 3 over 1.4. And that gave you about 2.57 equals the absolute value of x minus 3. Now here's the tricky part. There are two answers, right? If, if nothing was in there at all and I plugged in 2.57, that absolute value would be still 2.57. If this x minus 3 wasn't here and I plugged in a negative 2.57, the absolute value would make it a positive, making the left and right equal to each other. So I have to assume that this x minus 3 could be positive, or this x minus 3 could be negative. You solve both equations by adding 3. Well, one of them gives you 5.7, which is where this is going to be. Right? He has to fi stand 5.7 feet away, assuming this is 0, 0, to get a height of 1.2. It's an ugly 1.2. One of them is going to be about 0.43, which would be about here. All right, that's your 0.43. But the answer is he should stand 5.7 feet away from his buddy. That's going to be the end of that video. I'm going to hopefully save it this time, and I will talk to you guys soon.